after your tea break you are just starting module d credit management and we had just discussed maybe one and a half hours what are the contents of a balance sheet how to analyze a balance sheet how to interpret and use it for our credit decision so we'll continue with that yes i will again share because sometimes you know yes it will be unshared okay <clears throat> okay friends okay so this is how where we left okay now question number 11 question number 11 i think screen is visible screen is visible to all good and then yes boss yes friends <laughs> Well, if you are able to see the screen, yes, yes, sir. No, I want a yes. At least one of you respond. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. now friends look at the screen i have given a different question is all together a different question now how many of you are able to answer you need not have to calculate anything is just a brain twister look at the question if current ratio right now is 1.25 and <coughs> receivables worth 540 lakhs gets realized and the current liabilities are 1800 lakhs what will be the new current ratio no change no change i think one of you have to same 1.25 only are boss clap how you got it boss no sir no problem yes very good he is very correct current ratio will not undergo a change because it was a question once asked people uh, yes they were rather very simple question as he rightly told receivable worth 540 receivable is also a current asset is a part of current asset now 540 lakhs worth of receivables realized and realized me the receivables have become cash that's all real receivable has become bank balance so the total current assets after this activity will be the same then the current ratio also will not undergo any change so the answer is yes the same 1.25 will continue after this activity event also you understood no change in the ca as cr current uh, the ca and cr are receivables and cash are both part of the current assets how many of you understood anybody having a doubt please sir please repeat ah uh, friends what is current uh, ratio current ratio is current assets divided current by current liabilities liability. okay now current liabilities have not undergone any change but they have given some data to mislead you current assets also have not undergone any change how you come to know because they have told current ratio just 1.5 and receivable worth 540 lakhs receivable mean 
that is also a guarantee sir that is book debts that is unpaid invoices 540 lakhs now realized mean paid ha huh? so this also current asset get paid also current asset so current assets will not undergo change let it be anything so the current liabilities are 108 lakhs uh, 1800 lakhs just to mislead you now what will be the new current ratio same it will not undergo any change same 1.25 will continue yes now have you understood this is a twister question agreed or not yes boss all have agreed yes sir okay now take yes, sir yes boss okay now you go to 12 now there is a, again some uh, small simple arithmetic only but how you are able to do it look at the question the current ratio increases from 1.25 to 1.3 there is a jump in G ca by 120 lakhs is a different question you have to use little bit arithmetic only find out the current current liabilities level current cl level now current ratio has undergone a change how it undergone a change earlier it was 1.25 now it has increased to 1.3 why it is increased increased because current liabilities no change but current assets have increased by 120 lakhs okay this also in two steps you can find out whether any challenge anybody can do it friends okay i think some of you may have uh, attended a regular course huh 2400 ha ah, ha how you got it boss okay he is correct now jump in ratio you find out 1.25 to 1.3 to 1.3 now it has become earlier is 1.25 now what is the increase 1.3 1 a ratio even in ratio 0.05 is the increase agreed or not boss how this 0.05 was cost this was on account of 120 increase in current assets so direct equation is 0.05x is equal to equivalent is equal to 120 increase on account of increase in ca that is why they are using about jump <coughs> here they are using the word increase so you have to correlate both the data so 0.05x or 0.05 is equal to 120 mean one is equal to what one mean current liabilities okay current what is 125 current assets are 125 times more than current liabilities now because of 120 rise increase now current assets are 1.3 times more than current liabilities now immediately can find out even ah yes he is correct 05 x is equal to 120 that is 120 05 this then in that case one is equal to how much one mean this a point 05 is a, is a uh, part of one so one is equal to 120 divided by point 05 2400 lakhs is the current current liabilities level so 2400 mean then what will be the current assets current assets will be currently 3000 2400 1.25 3000 lakhs so the current liability earlier will be 2.2400 into 1.25 3000 lakhs now you find out it is 1.25 now it is 1.25 only now 120 increased so the new current assets will be 3120 again current liability same if we divide again you will get 1.03 only you can cross check but in the exam you need to cross check yes because there will be no time okay if you want to be 
sure about the answer, you can cross check, you will get the same answer. You try 3120, why 3120, 120 increase, 3120 divided by 2400, you will get 1.3. So the answer is correct. How many of you understood? All you understood or not, boss? Yes, friends. Yes. Huh? Yes, okay. Understood? Yes, sir. No, okay. Simple, ma simple mathematics, friends. Where you are not understood, you tell me. Yes, I will be able to explain. Shall I have to explain again? Yes, yes sir. friends. Okay. Friends, you know the current ratio, you can note down CA divided by CL. Current assets divided by current liabilities equal to current ratio. The earlier current ratio was 1.25. Now the new current ratio is 1.3. Why? Because current liabilities no change, but current assets 120 lakhs have increased. Current assets are increased by, so you assume you can also do like that. Now what is the increase? 1.3 minus 1.25, 0 0.05. 0 0.05 in terms of ratio. 0 0.05 is in terms of ratio. Earlier 1.25, now 1.3. So 0 0.05 in terms of ratio. So 0 0.05 is equal to equal to 120. So 1 is equal to 1 mean is a full. Is a 0 0.05 is part only. So 1.25 mean 1.25 times current asset, one time is current liabilities. That's the meaning. 1.25 divided by 1 is equal to 1.25 only. So current assets are 1.25 times more than current liabilities. So to find out current liabilities, 1 is equal to how much? So the answer is 120 divided by 0 0.05. Take your calculator. 2400 is the answer. Okay, friends. Understood or not? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So shall we go to the third one? 13th one? Yeah, 13th one. Construct a balance sheet. Now this is, yes, another 15, three questions. I will give on understanding a balance sheet. Then we'll go to ratio analysis. Okay. Because we have to, yes. Okay. We are going only slowly only. Don't feel we are hurrying up. Because our aim is to make you all understand. Because it is a very, very important exam you are going to face. Okay. Now you know uh, another exercise. Construct a balance sheet and answer the following. They will not, they will give only data. Based on that, you have to construct the balance sheet mean assets and liabilities have to tally. And then you have to answer the question. Question number one, debt to good ratio 2.5. Very good. Equity 40 lakhs. Okay. Now immediately you can tell what is debt, debt in this uh, example. What is debt? NCL. Debt is nothing but NCL. What is NCL? You take a small notepad by your side. Okay. Now equity is 40, friends. Equity 40. So NCL will be how much? The debt ratio 2.5. 100. 100. 100. Very good. 100. So 100. 100 have you got? 2.5 into 40. 2.5 have you got? 100 divided by 40 is 2.5. What is D? Long term loans. That is NCL. So long term loan divided by 40. Long term loan, let it be X. X divided by 40 is equal to 2.5. So long term debts, NCL is equal to 40 into 2.5. That is 100. So one answer got. So you can go on filling up. All of you take a small notepad. Equity, you put 40. NCL, you put 100. So 140 mil gaya. So two data available. You have to, from given data, you have to go on finding the, yes, finding of the other data. Normally five data is required. Equity you want, net worth, non-current liability, non-current liabilities, five variables. And current liabilities, this side liabilities, that side two. Five variables, you have to normally make a balance sheet. Now one data will be given. You have to from using the data, you have to find out the other data. 
So now, using these two data, you already found out NCL. Now total assets are 200 lakh. That means total liabilities also 200 lakhs. Now immediately you can tell what will be the current liabilities. Can anyone tell what is the current liabilities? One yes, boss. Huh? Sixty lakhs. Sixty. Sixty. Very good. Sixty. Sixty. So this is forty. That is hundred. Hundred and forty. So hundred and forty. Two hundred minus hundred and forty. Sixty. Okay. One by one. We will see. Now current ratio one point two five. So current liability is sixty. Current ratio one point two five. Now can you tell what will be current assets? Now can anyone tell what is current assets? So current liability is here. Huh? Seventy five. Very good. Current 75. assets seventy five. Yes. Now immediately you can tell what is NCA. Now what will be NCA? Tell me. Current assets seventy five. Mil gaya. Then what will be non current assets? Huh? 120, 125. 125 ah, 125. Then only it will become tally. Now you tally. Now all of you have equity forty. Check up. Check up your answer. Equity that is capital will be forty. Long term loans will be hundred. Current liabilities will be sixty. So this side will be two hundred. That side current assets are seventy five. Non current assets are one twenty five. That also two hundred. So your balance sheet is ready. Constructed Sir, a balance sheet. Ah, uh, madam, this is uh, uh, current liability sixty, na madam. Current liability, how you got sixty? Current liability is two hundred minus forty minus hundred. So that will be sixty. Current liability sixty mean current ratio. How you got current assets divided by current liability equal to one point two five. So current assets is sixty into one point two five. You take your calculator, madam. Sixty into one point two five. How much? How much is coming? Seventy five. Okay. Yes, so seventy five so current assets. Huh? And they have given current this data, boss. This uh, oh, current assets. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. They they will give, boss. These are yes, the sir. data they have given. Now. Now you have to answer the following. Now your balance is ready with these three data: debt to ratio, equity. With this available data, now you have constructed a balance sheet. Now you can answer any question. NWC how much? Now can anyone tell what is NWC in this example? Yes, tell me, boss. What is NWC? Already, uh, you are uh, huh? Fifteen. Fifteen. Ah, very good. Clap. Fifteen. Have you got fifteen? Seventy-five minus sixty. Current assets minus minus current liability. Fifteen. Very good. Now next question. T O L versus T N W. This question it come in the uh, ratio analysis, but still, yeah, uh, cut and dry, sir. What is T O L? Note down. T O L mean total outside liability that include. Long term loan and short term loan. That is NCL plus CL. NCL, NCL plus CL divided by capital. Divided by capital. What is NCL plus CL here? NCL plus CL is one sixty. Agreed or not? NCL plus CL. How much, my friends? T Y L means total outside liability. Can anyone tell what is the total liability in this example? Tell me. One sixty was. One sixty, one sixty divided by forty. One sixty divided by forty. That mean six. That mean T Y L T N W. T Y L is one sixty. <laughs> have you got one sixty? Not ah. Uh, have you got one sixty? Current liability sixty. Long term liability is hundred. One sixty divided by Forty, okay. So that is one sixty divided by forty six, not six rupees six ratio. Okay. So this is mil gaya. Now C A. How much C A? We already seventy five. One sixty divided by forty. Hmm. Yes, madam. One sixty divided by four. Answer is four. Ah yes yes. Answer is four. Ah. Huh? Yes sir. No, one sixty. No, madam. The T Y L is one sixty. T 
टी वन एलिस वन सिक्सटी अभी गाट वन सिक्सटी इवर लॉन्ग टाइम लाइब्रेटिस आर हंड्रेड करंट लाइब्रेटिस आर सिक्सटी सो वन सिक्सटी डिवाइडेड बाय फार्टी इक्विटी इस फार्टी टी एंड डबल इस नथिंग बट इक्विटी ओके एक्चुअली दिस इस टैंजिबल नेटवर्क ना इंटैंजिबल सार नॉट देयर सो एंडियर फार्टी लाइक्स यू कैन टेक सो वन वन सिक्सटी डिवाइडेड बाय फार्टी सिक्स सिक्स इस द दिस इस कॉल्ड सॉल्वेंसी रेशियो उटसाइडिटीट CL plus NCL. The TNW is equal to uh, TNW mean tangible net worth. Actually, you have to deduct the intangible assets if any. Now here intangible assets are not there, so the total equity forty lakhs is the TNW forty. So one sixty divided by forty four is a good ratio. Solvency ratio. What does it mean? You interpret correctly. Outside loans are four times more than paid-up capital. Agreed? Is a good company or bad company? Tell me. Is a it is a tolerable level. It's a tolerable level. Is a good okay. Four is okay. If okay, if it exceeds four, then the financial strength will be lost because they are taking more loan. Mean is not a good sign. Outside liability going up. And equity is very low. Is a good company or bad company, boss? Tell me, boss. Now, then I will tell you two companies. T Y or T N W. One company is poor. This company is poor. No, one one second. This company T Y or T N W. Just now we are told four. Another company T Y or T N W is six. Now tell me which company is strong? Which company is financially strong? Yes, the company with four or company with six. Ah, uh, four is strong because they have got less loan. But the company with six, they have taken more loan. More loan will not give strength to your company. Please remember, more loans means they will be under more pressure, more risk. So any company having more loan as a banker, you have to avoid over debted companies. Banker has to be. Very careful with over debted companies. Over capital company good because they have got capital more mean is a good company. But more loan mean it is a risk company. Uh, analytical part will come afterwards. Ratio analysis. Okay. So next one NCA. What is NCA here? NCA here is one twenty five. One twenty five. One twenty five. One ah uh, yes one twenty five. Now last is total LT sources. Uh, what is the total LT sources? Tell me, boss. What is the total LT sources? Long term sources. How much? One forty. I want bullet time. One forty. Car right. Great. One forty. So all the five. Yes, all the five cracked. This is only a sample. Same way they will ask. Don't worry. If you are lucky, similar questions come. You can nicely answer. Okay. So twelve. I will give so many models. So the uh, yes. So it has been now explained in this uh, side. Okay, this is the question just now we solved. Now explanation is given here. The degree ratio 2.5 mean E is 40 mean. So D will be 2.5 into 40, 100. So total liabilities will be 200 mean. Current liabilities will be 200 minus 140, 40 equity 100. So the current liability will be 60. Current ratio 1.25 mean, so the current assets will be 16 to 1.25, 75 step by step. So NCA will be automatically 125. So the NWC will be 75 minus 60, 15. So the TYL just now discussed. No, oh, correct. TYL is 160 divided by 40. CA is 75 lakhs. Okay, understood. NCA is 125 lakhs. Total LT sources are 40 plus. Yes, hundred, hundred and forty. So all the five mark. This is a worksheet illustration. Understood? 
I am telling same question may not come, but similar to this will come. So based on one data, you can find out another data. Agreed? Based on the ratios. Okay, friends. Current ratio. Even two parameters are given. Third one you can find out. Understood? Debt to ratio. Debt to ratio they will tell. Either they will give debt or they will give equity. Other one you can find out. So like that, it is like solving a puzzle. Okay. Now twelfth one over. Okay. Now we'll go to move on to thirteenth one. Construct. Ah, uh, this I explained again. Okay. Okay. This animated version. That is why you'll get uh, yes. Now question number thirteen. In wonderful question. Earlier this was repeatedly FAQ. FAQ means frequently asked question. Now you tell me they will give an example. A company incurring loss will be reflected on what side of the balance sheet? A. And miscellaneous asset side of the BS. Now you have to pick up the correct answer. Will be shown as deduction from the NW on the liabilities side. Okay. As an addition to intangible assets, loss depends on the board decision. Now what will be the correct answer? Tell me. B, what? sir. B, huh? huh? sir. B, B is the correct answer. B. Very good, very good. B is the correct answer now. Not board decision. Now board cannot decide. As per the Company Act amend, Amendment 2013, now they will give you example. Any loss, immediately it will be reduced from the tier 1 capital, core capital. Capital will be reduced. That is how is a new rule. The earlier days, loss they will show as a preliminary something they will manage it. They will not show in the uh, uh, in the liability side because if it's a shown as a deduction, people will shareholders will come to know oh, it's a loss. Now company act is amended. Nobody can hide it. Loss means they cannot hide it. They have to immediately reduce from the capital. That's a new thing. Okay, friend. Okay, it's a theory question. No. Okay. Now this question repeatedly asked. What is the other name of debt to good ratio? I will give you no whether it is called a leverage ratio, whether it is called a gearing ratio, whether it is called liquidity ratio, whether it is called debt service coverage ratio, whether it is both A and B. Now, what is the correct answer? Tell me, boss, quickly. Yes, both yes, boss. D, sir. D, huh? D yeah. Oh, no. Uh, correct a, answer. A, leverage ratio. A, sir. A, ah, sir. B. Leverage yes. ratio. A and B. A and B. Now, down. Now, debt to ratio is called leverage ratio. It is also called gearing ratio. What is leverage? Leverage ratio popularly used. High levered company. Then they will ask. Next question you see. High levered company, high gear company. High gear company, high leverage company mean they have taken loans left and right. So much loan they have taken. But little capital. That is called high levered company, high gear company. Low gear company mean more capital, less loans. Which is strong? High levered company or low, uh, low levered company? Tell me, boss. Which company will be strong? Tell me. Low levered company or high levered company? Huh? Low. No high doubt. Low levered company. Ah, mm -hmm. High levered company is risky. Low. High levered company means more loans. More loans. Okay, left and right, some companies will take loans. Okay, beyond their normal requirement. Then they will land in debt trap. So nobody should take a loan disproportionately they should take minimum loan maximum minimum luggage maximum comfort same way minimum loan uh, happy journey will be happy your financial journey will be happy okay 314 one sir, leverage ratio, sir uh, ge gearing ratio sir gearing ratio both are same bus what is gearing ratio leverage ratio is very popularly used gearing ratio is earlier was used but the same impact. What is leveraging ratio on a bus? You can note down. Leveraging is doing more business with less capital. With less capital and with more borrowed funds. Some people know 10 rupees only they will put. 90 rupees they will borrow from others. And they will run a company for 100 rupees. Now you tell me whether the company is good or bad. Only 10 rupees they put from their pocket. 90 rupees. They mobilize somebody's money. 100 rupees business they do. Such companies are called high leverage company. Debt to good ratio is 9 is to 1. <coughs> debt to good ratio 9 is to 1. What is 9? Debts are 9 times more than the equity. 
Whether it's a good company, boss, tell me, boss. If loans are nine times more than no. the capital, now do you think it's a good company or bad company? Very bad company. It will it will sink. Any bad company, it cannot sustain too long. Agreed? Okay. Now come to next question. Sir, what Putin, is depth? Sir, what ah, is depth madam? service coverage? Depth service coverage ratio. Ah, that what is, is ah, wait, madam. That will be coming in term loan assessment. Okay. What okay. is debt service coverage ratio <clears throat> in term loan? How much profits are generated? Adding back depreciation and whether that is sufficient to service a loan, term loan, installment in interest, that is called DSER, debt service coverage ratio. But debt to good ratio is little different. Debt to good ratio is also called as leverage ratio, gearing ratio. Now you look at the question. A company is said to be in high gear. Uh, they will two blanks you have to fill up. This company is said to be in high gear means dash. Uh, okay, dash and the credit risk is dash. More. Now you have to uh, high gear more. company. Credit risk is more. more. Credit risk uh, is more. Less. Uh, ah yes yes. Uh, gear means more loan, more, less. more loans more loans than less capital. And the credit risk is more, correct? Okay. Uh, so here they are giving the explanation. More capital and less loan, more risk. Two blanks you have to fill up, you know. More capital and less loan. Huh? No, high gear mean that is not the correct. Okay. Less capital and more loan. No, that is also not correct. Uh, okay. Less capital. Okay. High gear mean less capital, more loan. Okay. And more risk. Uh, correct. B is correct. B. Less capital, high profit, less risk. No, profit is no way concerned. More capital, low. So the answer is B. Answer is B. Agreed? More capital, less capital, more loan, and more risk. So three blanks you have to fill up. Okay? One blank is less capital and more. So like that, they will... Uh, yes. Okay? It will not be direct question. This type of question they may ask. Okay? 15. Understood? Now 16. If 16 to 20, again, uh, so four examples. Okay, four. This may be a case study. Please remember, in credit management, treasury management, forex management, and all this, now the new pattern is case study. Case study means they will give a situation, simple situation only. And from the situation, given situation, they will ask five questions. So if you understood the situation, you can score all the five. For example, you look at the question. It's a sample. Debt to good ratio 3. Current ratio 1.5. And the current assets are 540 lakhs. Capital is 160 lakhs. They will give this much data. Okay? You understood? Now, based on this data, you have to answer. What is the NCA? Five questions they will ask. You. What is NCA? What is CL? What is NCL? What is LT sources? What are the total assets? Sometimes they will ask, what is NWC? Anything they may ask. So out of the five questions, you have to answer using the given data. So can we start? Very simple bus. OK, uh, yes. Now, NCA, uh, CR is 1.5. Any data, first data is current assets. Current assets, 540. Five current ratio, 1.5. Now, can anyone tell what will be the current liabilities? Yes, boss. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 310. 480 will be long-term debts. It is on other band. It is called the NCL. So in uh, liability side, two, uh, two, uh, yes, got two, got two fishes got. All in all way, three, three on liability side, two on uh, asset side. Very important for a balance sheet. So here, capital got, capital already they have given, and the long-term debts they have got. Now CR is 1.5. CR is 1.5 mean. That uh, current assets they have given 540, 
So 540 divided by 1.5, 360 is current liabilities. Agreed, Abbas? Agreed, friends? 360 is current liabilities. Agreed or not? Okay. Now, yes, uh, okay. Uh, uh, now total liabilities will be 360 plus 480 plus 160. Capital plus long-term loan plus current liability make the total liability. So the total liability will be 360 plus 480. What is 360? Current liabilities. What is 480? Non-current liabilities. What is 160? Capital 1000. Now total assets also 1000. Now NCA will be, already they have given 540 current assets. So 540 current so assets. So what is 480, mean? sir? Huh? Uh, oh, 480. 480. Boss, long term debt, boss. Debt ratio 3, you know. So equity is already they have given 160. Third line only they have given equity is uh, 160. So 3 into 160, 480, boss. 3 into 160, 480. What is 480? NCL. Non current liabilities. Term liabilities. So every data, yes, EC. So NCA is, so current assets are 540 main. NCA will be 460. Okay. So NCA 460. Now, once you resolve, no, every answer you can give. NCA 460. CL, CL how much? 360. Uh, data is ready, no? You just answer. What is NCL? Now, what is NCL? 480. How much LT sources was? Tell me how much LT sources? 480. Uh, no, not 480. Uh, uh, LT sources, 480 plus capital also you have to include, you know, 480, 640, uh, 640, 640 is the LT sources, what are the total assets, already you have got 1000, total liabilities, 1000, what is NWC here, what is NWC here, networking capital, uh, tell me boss, what is networking capital here, hmm. answer, I want bullet answer, 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. Yes, 180. CA minus CL. That's all. Current ratio 1.5. So all mil gaya. So complete analysis. 5 mark. 5 out of 5 will catch. Correct? Let's do. Long-term source, sir. Long. Huh? Ah, LT. Total LT means long-term sources. What is long-term sources? Was? Capital plus NCL. Capital is how much? 160. Long term loans are how much? 480. So 480 plus 160, 640 is the long term sources. Correct. Current liabilities are 360. Current liabilities are short term sources. These two are long term. Current liabilities are short term sources. Similar way, current assets are short term assets. Other NCA is long term assets. Correct, Abbas? Is that correct? Interpretation of a balance sheet. If you are practicing, N no question you miss. NCL, sir. Yes, boss. NCL, NCL means total LT debts, boss. LT debts are considered as NCL. What is the expansion of uh, long term debt? Non current liability. What is non current liability? All liability other than current liabilities. All liabilities other than current liability. Similar way, all assets other than current assets are NCL. Who is a good man? A good man is one who is not bad. Then who is a bad man? Who is a bad man? A bad man is one who is not who good. Is not a good Similar man. Man. Yes, yes. What is the current liability? If it is, uh, what is the non-current liability? Liabilities other than current liabilities are non-current liabilities. Then what is the current asset? Uh, okay. Uh, what is the non-current asset? All assets other than current assets or non-current assets. Correct? Well, you define one, the other one you tell other than that. Okay, for example, similar way. What is a collateral security? What is a collateral security? The securities other than prime securities are collateral security was that's all. Like a good man, bad man. What is a collateral security? The securities which are not primary securities, all securities other than primary securities are called collateral securities. Agreed or not? This is how you have to understand the definition. Okay. Now come to 21. So 20 question resolved. 
Okay, so 20 question result. This is the end of level one. So level one, all uh, step by step, all the five steps. Okay, 18. Now 18 is resolved. 19 is resolved. 19 is resolved. Same question, five more question. No, each question, step by step explanation is there. This is 19. You already resolved 19. What are the total resources? 640. What are the total asset? 1000. What is the total liability? 1000. What is the current liability? Anything can be answered. When the balance it is correctly prepared, anything can be answered because time is only one minute. Remember, it is not a classroom exercise. Classroom will give you big exercise, but in CAB, they want your quickness. Are you quickly? This is the end of level one. Okay. Now we go to level two. Level two means, yes, wait, was, don't worry. Level two. Level two means, yes. Mm. Okay. Now level two, I will again, uh, what I will do, sometimes it will have been unshared. So I will again share. Okay. Otherwise, sometimes it will not be. Yes. Okay. Now tell me. Who? Now, are you able to see the screen, all of you? Yes, boss? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, question yes, number one. Question number one. Now, we are going to ratio analysis. So far, what you have done is understanding a balance sheet, interpreting a balance sheet, taking decisions, analyzing a balance sheet over. Now, we are going a little further. Okay. It's a very big subject. But sampled from CAB angle only, we have discussed. Now you come to another important chapter known as ratio analysis. What is ratio analysis? It's a mathematical data you are interpreting and you are taking a conclusion. You are making a judgment. Okay. How far it is relevant? Now, uh, there are four key ratio, five actually. The five are very vital for a banker. For example, if you go to a uh, doctor, Doctor, what he will do? First, he will take stethoscope and uh, measure your BP. BP or heartbeat. Next, he will measure your BP, sugar, you, uh, like that, like that, hemoglobin. So, similar way, as a banker, any balance sheet means these five are important. These five are important. What is number one? What is number one? Debt to good ratio. Have you calculated debt to good ratio? Have you calculated debt to good ratio? Long term debts divided by equity. Okay. This is also called leverage ratio, Gary ratio. Okay. What is this ratio? TOL. What is TOL? Total outside liability. What is TNW? Uh, yes, total equity. That is tangible equity. That is also called solvency ratio. And what is credit ratio? Credit ratio means CA divided by CL. This is also called liquidity ratio. Okay, liquidity. Liquidity means how, how many, how much current assets are there to take care of the current liability. So the liquidity ratio, what is the ideal ratio? What is the solvency ratio? What is the ideal ratio? What is the Gary ratio? What is the ideal? If it goes beyond that, what will be the implications? All this as a banker, we should analyze. What is NWC? CA minus CL. It's not a ratio. It is expression quantum. Now next one, quick ratio. What is quick ratio? Quick assets divided by uh, quick liability. Also called acid test ratio. Note down. The name is not given. Okay, I will add it. Quick ratio, also called acid test ratio. Note down. Agreed? Now, shall we... These are the 14... Uh, these are the 14 ratio. Uh, now, sometimes, uh, decision will be based on analysis. debt equity ratio. Long-term debts versus equity. So, high ratio indicate more dependence on debt funds. It's a high ratio mean they are uh, depending on other funds. Their funds is very little. Okay. Low ratio, low ratio means higher stake by promoter. For benchmark is 3 is to 2, 3 is to 1. Debt to ratio 3 is to 1 is ideal. Okay. Sometimes you know, you don't cross the limit. Like that, there will be some warning signal. Suppose the debt to ratio 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the more debt remain danger. Okay. Yes, caution. But for MSME unit, you can allow up to 4 is to 1. MSME unit cannot bring more capital. 
so they will be three is to one is ideal for other company the bigger company two is to one also wonderful wonderful one is to one is still wonderful strong company two is to one is okay three is to one is tolerable four is to one allowed only for msme units and others okay now come to nwc what is nwc can be calculated in two ways ca minus cl lt sources minus lt uses these are the theoretical part and the nwc should be ideally 20 to 25% of current assets this is a interpretation okay your weight are you not asking you are overweighted your height is 5 and 1/2 your age is uh, 35 what should be your weight is there any standards are not there otherwise they will tell you are over weight reduce the weight correct you know so similar way as a banker you are also a doctor you have to compare the financials of a corporate and you have to take decision now credit decision based on these are the things okay now don't worry what you have discussed now understand in the balance sheet okay current ratio mean is the relationship between current assets and what is the ideal current ratio then you will question you last current ratio what is the ideal ratio whether it is to be 1.5 1.15 1.25 to 1.33 ah uh, not down 1.25 to 1.33 1.33 mean more than 1.33 indicates what less than 1.25 indicates what another 2 minutes you wait another 1 minute i will give one example beautiful example if less than 1.25 mean this company is having less liquidity so the chances of default will be they are okay cushion is not there less than 1.25 okay it is more than 1.33 1.5 a uh, current ratio 1.7 current ratio that is also not good please remember high pp is also not good low pp is also not good nobody can tell sir i have got a high pp sir no sir i have got a low pp sir no pp should be the blood pressure should be within a range similar way the current ratio also is if it is more than 1.33 also that indicates ideal uh, that is inventory is more sometimes cash unnecessary more book debts are more that is why because the current ratio will improve with the improvement in uh, inventory receivable cash all are uh, are dangerous if you keep more cash risky don't give more balance in uh, current account or more balance in the ro- uh, almira cash 1 crore cash if you put it in almira no use zero it is zero return similar way inventory just like that you are piling up inventory room is full of stock what is the use no use you should have optimum uh, inventory and book debts sir i am selling on my uh, sales is 12 crore my book debts are uh, 6 crore what does it mean boss my sales is 12 crore my book debts are 6 crores what does it mean can anyone tell what does it mean you understood the example my sales are 12 crore boss or my sales are 12 crore my book debts also 12 crore what does it mean my book debts also 12 crore what does it mean boss is uh, i am a good loan or loan or sell same ah uh, i am a good i am a good company i am running a good company or worst company my uh, sales are 12 crore no profit, and i am having book debts 12 crore that mean whatever i am selling ah uh, whatever i am selling only on credit so when credit increases the company will fail okay so small extent you can give loans credit sales can be minimum to promote the sale because you have to keep in uh, tune with the other other industries others are selling on mostly msme units are selling on credit that is why they will have book debts supposing hospital is on hotel they will have no book debts why no because all their sales will be on cash stamp cash and carry no book debts so as a banker yes you are you are uh, working up till needs will be very less if the if the company is selling on uh, s- selling on what cash sales the company will need less working capital so many interpretation just wait okay boss so the tyo tnw this again another ratio that is called the solvency ratio what is solvency ratio you are taking loans left and right all long term loan all short term loan versus your capital 
your capital is only 10 lakhs 10 crore but your outside <laughs> loans are 90 crores outside loans are 90 crore outside loan mean current uh, current liabilities plus uh, non current liabilities put together 90 crores so your solvency ratio is 9 solvency ratio is 9 what does it mean your loans are total loans are nine times more than your capital whether, whether bank will finance such company no bank will not finance such company okay please i think uh, don't forget the ground rule when you go off screen please put your finger on the mute button don't forget because whatever your entire background will yes will be heard by others okay what is now quick ratio quick ratio mean how quickly they will meet the quick liabilities what is simple quick assets divided by quick liability what is quick assets again note down the definition quick assets mean all as current assets excluding inventory and excluding prepaid expenses that's the definition note down note down quick assets mean all current assets all current assets, including cash, all current assets, but excluding inventory and prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses also current assets. We can already have paid. Again, it may not become cash. Okay, again, it may not become cash. What's the quick ratio? How quickly you convert your assets and generate cash to meet the current liabilities, quick liabilities. And quick liability mean all current liabilities other than bank CCOD. All right? Then you may wonder, sir, our bank loan is not a, oh my God, our bank loan is not a quick liability? No. Our bank CCOD has got one year validity. is not a immediate. For example, they have taken raw materials from the uh, market on 15 days credit, which is priority was the raw materials on 15 days they have to pay back or uh, uh, what is the priority the priority will be raw material trade credit our ccod loan is not the priority yes okay we can wait up to one year but the person who has given raw material on 15 days the 16th day if we don't settle further supply of raw material he will not give so the working capital activity of the company will come to a standstill so everything has interpretation, implications, okay? But a quick ratio, we'll see. Now, there are two balance sheet bus. Quickly, the ratio analysis. Now, one uh, immediately you can understand bus. Now, how quickly? Now, there is balance sheet one, balance sheet two. Now, the question is, which balance is good? Which balance sheet you have to avoid? You look at the first balance sheet. You can immediately find out. Capital is put in bus. Oh, you all join me. In analyzing a balance sheet, here the capital is 15. Long term liabilities are long term loans are 65. So 65 plus 15, how much? 65 plus 15, how much was? 80. Tell 80. me. 80. But how much long term assets? 85. Is a good management or bad management? Tell me. How many of you tell? Is a good management? <coughs> <coughs> Financial management is good. Financial management is bad. You tell me, boss. Good or bad? Good. 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 Short 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 short. Ah, they have done diversion. This company has got diversion. What is diversion? The 5 rupees has gone from where? 15 plus 60 by 80 only. But how they were able to create NCA 85? NCA means long term assets. These are long term sources. When the long term sources are 80 only, they have created Long term assets 85. Now this company is mismanaged. This company is already NPA. This company is already NPA. Why? Because the 5 lakhs has gone from 
this side the bank borrowing is all current liabilities has been used for long term assets for creation of long term assets they are used they are used which one short term liabilities example i am telling your bank is having sp account 1000 crores okay uh, current account 2000 crores whether these 3000 crores can be used for giving housing loans you tell me whether i am right or wrong understood the question or not your bank has got 1000 crore sp account 2000 crore current account balance so totally how much 3000 crores whether these 3000 crores can be used for giving housing loans tell me whether it is a good no. practice or bad no no good or bad why no no you know it is our money is not good ha huh? what they have done what they have done is a serious mistake what mistake they have done parun short term funds have been noted down short term funds have been used for long term assets short term funds have been used for long term asset it is called diversion okay now you come to the second one this is the first implication this is diversion their long term assets always should be less than long term sources now you look at this second one their current liabilities are 20 15 plus 5 20 but their current assets are 15 so that mean negative is the negative liquidity current ratio will be less than 1 and nwc will be minus minus 5 why nwc minus 5 even if all the current assets are sold they will not be able to pay back to the current liabilities whereas current liabilities are 20 current assets are 15 that mean they may default by 5 negative uh, yes nwc is negative 15 minus 20 Sir, yes, what boss. Is BB here? NWC mean? Ah, uh, yes, madam. Ah, uh, what is BB over here? BB. BB mean bank borrowing. Ah, yeah, correct. This is Sorry. called bank borrowing. That is CCOD. Our we are giving CCOD loan, na madam. CCOD working up the loan that is getting classified as sometime the balance sheet uh, analysis BB bank borrowing. Within bracket, you can note down CCOD. Either CC or OD, both cannot have. Either you give cash credit or you give overdraft. Both are small differences are there. For contractors, we will not give OC CC because CC people they have to submit stock statement and they have to give book debt statement and they have to compile drawing power every month and and they have to update the drawing power. But OD people. the borrowers enjoy od limit overdraft uh, facility they need not have to submit monthly stock statement but they have to give a collateral security okay but, so they have to operate within the limit there will be no drawing power that's the difference between but both are considered as working capital modes modes of working capital finance okay friends so bb what is ocl other current liabilities other than this ocl includes what outstanding provisions trade credit all are ocl similar way oc uh, here also oca uh, oca oca mean other current assets now based on these two balance sheet first debt to equity ratio for both you have to calculate and both you have to offer comments which is good which is bad now first company you see what is debt to equity ratio 65 divided by 15 What is sixty-five divided by fifteen, boss? Tell me. Four point three three. Ah, four point three three. Now you calculate this company. This company is good. Why you know? Ah, uh, long-term loans are fifty-five. Capital is a uh, little high. So debt to ratio for this company is fifty-five divided by twenty-five. Ah, uh, fifty-five. Point two. Ah, uh, which one, boss? Okay. Now tell me which company is good. Between these two, one parameter. One parameter. Yes, company. Yes, Second, second one, second, second, second one is good. Why? Because debt to credit ratio low. Debt to credit ratio more mean here more than four mean they are above the danger mark. Okay. So first parameter over. Second parameter current ratio. Second parameter first parameter they are good they are poor. 
This actually a worst balance sheet. This already NPA. You tell me why NPA? Just wait. Okay. Now current ratio here it is fifteen. Here current ratio yes it is twenty current liability. So fifteen divided by twenty point seven five is the current ratio. Yes. Here current ratio is twenty five divided by twenty. One point two five. One point two. Yes. Okay. So this company. In second parameter also, company B is company two is balance sheet two is good. Okay, third ratio, T Y L T N W. Here T Y L is eighty. Oh my God, eighty. Sixty five plus. Oh sorry, sixty five plus. Ah, eighty five. Eighty five. Eighty five divided by fifteen. Eighty five divided by fifteen mean almost five point. Six, almost near to six. Yes, yes. Okay. Here the uh, the solvency ratio is okay. So fifty-five plus twenty seventy-five divided by twenty-six. Three only. Just three. Correct, you know. This is seventy-five. Fifty-five. Long-term loan. Short-term loan. Seventy-five divided by twenty-five. This is three, but this man, this balance sheet is more than five. So the third parameter also, this is poor. This company is good. This company is bad. Okay, third parameter. What is the fourth parameter? Here NWC is negative. Current assets are fifteen. Current liabilities are twenty. So the NWC is fifteen minus twenty minus five. But here it is positive. 25 minus 20 plus 5. So this company again scores better than this company. Then last one, quick ratio. Similar way comparison you can do. What is quick ratio? Quick assets. There they have given one data. CA includes here they have given only entire thing as one head CA. That includes inventory 10 on both sides. Okay. So inventory. Quick ratio. Remember, inventory has to be excluded. Why inventory has to be excluded? Because inventory may not become cash immediately. Inventory will become receivable. Then receivable may become uh, cash. So it will take some more time to become cash. So inventory for quick ratio it is excluded. Remember, uh, what is the logic? Somebody has started the formula. Now we have to follow. Correct, you know, our forefather. Somebody has invented the theorem. Okay, quick ratio, acid test ratio. This is not normally used by the bank, but CAB questions will be asked because it's a fancy name, you know, acid test ratio, quick ratio. So just to make you alert, they will ask all these questions. Okay, now that quick ratio also same way you have to calculate. So again, balance sheet two is good, balance sheet one will be bad. LT sources, ST sources, ST sources here. Uh, yes, LT sources here. LT here. Eight, ST sources are here. Sir, five. AT. Can you explain, sir? Ah, uh, which one? Ah, five. Five. Ah, quick ratio. Quick ratio. Quick ratio mean quick assets. What is the quick assets? Was India are fifteen. You cannot take current assets are fifteen. Minus ten. But they are given five. Ah, uh, minus ten. So it is five divided by ah uh, quick ratio. Bank borrowing you have to exclude. Okay. So five divided by five, five divided by five, one. Quick ratio in this balance it is one. In this balance it twenty five is the current asset and inventory is ten. So the current assets minus inventory will be fifteen and the bank borrowing is only twelve. Ah uh, yes, fifteen minus fifteen uh, divided by eight, fifteen divided by eight almost two, uh, two. almost two. one point so eight seven five. Ah uh, yes yes. So here also balance sheet two, this balance sheet has got a better quick ratio. That means quickly they can uh, service the liabilities. Okay, friends. So this parameter just to know which company is better. Okay. Now you come to these are the things you are already aware, but they will ask little bigger question. Wait, wait. Okay. Now which balance sheet can be financed? Now if you analyze. This balance sheet don't touch, okay? Because already negative, and this balance sheet can be financed because some all some are positive, 
okay it's a well managed company whereas this is a badly managed company okay friends that's the interpretation so high gear low gear which is a high gear company number 1 or uh, number 2 uh, number 1 is high gear company because number more low. yes 65 because the debt to ratio is uh, more than 4 okay but here it is just less than 3 okay yes uh, just two point something so this a uh, uh, yes better compared to this company this is better because more capital is there less loans are there proportion of loans is less here proportion of loan is more ratio is more okay so these are the parameter find out the current ratio current ratio also yes that is bad solvency ratio solvency ratio you understood total outside liability divided by total equity so this common ratio you can always and you can do nicely no mistakes okay now you come to yeah, some other ratios quick ratio now now look at the balance sheets now look at the balance sheet boss which balance is good which balance sheet you have to avoid can anyone tell which balance sheet is good balance sheet a this will call a b c we will go like this okay this is balance sheet 1 balance sheet 2 balance sheet 3 now C which balance sheet ideal huh? c is c is good c is good or a is good ha huh? hmm answer is correct yes, this is good this is uh, neither good nor bad this is bad already a bad account npa because long term uses are more than long term sources 80 rupees has come from long term source but already they have invested 90 rupees in long term asset that mean that 10 rupees difference has gone from short term sources so the short term uh surplus has been used for long term asset long short term funds have been used for long term assets then it is called a diversion mismanagement of funds this unit will uh, and the current ratio will be sir, less uh, than one nwc will be less than ah uh, yes negative yes boss sir if uh, lt is more then uh, why can't uh. we guess that uh, land and uh, machinery cost is high valuation uh, okay not valuation by it just tally na boss now they will value even after valuation okay so the investment in uh, okay investment in long term assets is higher than the long term sources so it is not a prudent management okay this may be an account of uh, over uh, that is uh, okay but uh, anyhow any investment in excess investment in uh, uh, non current assets in excess of long term sources in the long run the company will be going to npa with a mismanagement because that uh, this uh, surplus this uh, long term uses are more mean the difference has gone from the short term sources so in this balance sheet short term funds have been used for funding long term assets that is the impression is a conclusion so any banker will immediately reject this balance sheet this is a zero balance sheet this is a king fisher balance sheet you know who is king fisher or you know who is narav modi so this balance sheet is already npa don't touch it this balance is good because positive this balance sheet is current ratio is only 1 and long term sources are exactly equal to long term uses sources and and nwc zero here current assets also 20 current liability also 20 so net working capital is zero so they have no margin working capital margin is not there nwc is also known as margin for working capital understood boss we will come to the uh, methods of financing method 1 method 2 a lot of things are there in uh, store for us so up to this understood now what constitute source what constitute use in credit assessment sometimes you need to analyze a cash flow statement sometimes you need to analyze a fund flow statement to understand only two simple facts you have to remember already we have discussed sources mean always 
increase in liability always a source bus even in bed night if you ask him don't worry in flow sources mean increase in liability you are getting money you are getting funds similar way decrease in assets always source because you are selling the assets you are reducing your assets so you are getting money and same way contra increase in liability source increase in assets use okay increase in assets mean you go on creating assets you go on giving loans you go on giving making investment then mean your funds are used your funds are used here funds are sourced sourced uses always it will match okay and here decrease in liability you have got money you have used that money to pay back the loans so that is also used so two things are and profit is a source loss is a use remember loss mean your funds are used profit mean your funds are sourced okay source profits are sources loss are uses this also you have to remember okay friends this just to keep in mind because this will help you in any of the exam or any of the question but as a banker you should know the fundamental sir, rule profit are sources loss are uses ah profit okay. is always source madam source of funds profit mean yes you have got but, funds now. your balance sheet size will go has to be deducted in equity sir yes yes in that, that will use the funds you know so it will be an outflow so to that extent your funds will come down your uh, funds at your disposal will come down because loss will eat your capital loss will reduce your capital so that may loss is considered as use of funds profit is considered as source of funds your funds position will improve loss will decrease your fund position okay in other way sources are inflows or uh, uses are outflows okay Uh, both terminology you can use okay this is make you familiar now come to the next question credit management now another question okay one more question i think afterwards we will move on to next subject in a balance sheet total assets are 480 tyl the, the different way of asking is a newest uh, model in uh, uh, balance sheet analysis okay the other day they will give a balance sheet you have to find out the ratio no now they will give only a data based on the data you have to interpret interpret a balance sheet now in a balance sheet total assets are 480 okay total tyl nw that is solvency ratio is 4 is to 1 debt to debt ratio is 3 is to 1 then what is the nw what is the cl only this much only one data they have given all that's a ratio from that we have to find out net worth capital you have to find cl okay one by one you have to find out total assets are 480 bus total assets are 480 now total liabilities total outside liability net worth is 4 is to 1 and debt to debt ratio 3 is to 1 ha ah? ah, yes yes debt to debt ratio 3 is to 1 na and uh, tyl T, uh, nw uh, 4 is to 1 so here what is common net worth will be common here also it is common here also it is common here d is 3 times more here all loans are four times more so that mean now can anyone tell what will be current liabilities in this current liabilities will be equal to equity whether correct or wrong tell me boss right sir 481 ah 480 ah very good okay we'll see one by one now step number 1 total asset this is a solution this is a question this is a solution explained okay total asset 480 mean total liability also 480 this is first point okay 480 480 second step mean total liabilities mean total liabilities mean 4 is to 1 total liability 4 equity is 1 total liability mean uh term liabilities ncl plus cl is 4 times more than uh, equity okay so 4 plus 1 makes 480 Four plus one makes four eighty. Four plus one how much? Four is to one mean four part one part. So five parts equal to four eighty. Total assets total liability same. Then one part. So net worth is just one. Net worth will be ninety six. Agreed or not? Net worth or capital will be ninety six. Then TYL will be uh, TYL is four times. So four times mean. 96 into 
384. Okay, again, next data. Dating ratio is a very intelligent question, boss. It appears to be very simple, but you have to be a little uh, mathematician. As a banker, you have to use your uh, yes. Okay, sir, don't worry, only this many questions. No, varieties I'm going to give. Today is only second day, you know, up to seven sittings. We'll go one by one. Okay. Yes, because your dinner time also you have to keep in mind. Okay, time is there. Okay. Now next one. Debt to ratio three bus. So that means D is long term debts are NCL is three times more than E. E you have got just now. Uh, okay. Now net worth you already got 96. So that will be 96 into three, three two eighty eight. 96 into 3, 288. So CL alone, here TOL, CL plus NCL, 384. Now uh, uh, NCL alone, 288. So CL will be 96. From one data, you can get another data. So now 96 got. Now answer, net worth is 96. Question is, what is the net worth? They have not gone to the asset side. They are still in the liability side only. Net worth is 96, CL is also 96, NCL is 288. Total, if you make, you'll get 480. 96, 288, 96. Okay, incidentally, sir, why both are same? Based on the data. Okay, it has a coincidence. Yes, D, so D, you D, 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 huh? D mean long term debts. D mean long term debt was long term debts. D mean long term debt. That is equivalent to NCL. B, in ratio, you will call it debt-to-equity ratio because it will be too long, you know. But balance it analysis, don't call D, you have to call NCL. E means, e means current liabilities. E means current uh -huh. liabilities. E means Which current one? liabilities. No, e no, no, no. Long-term liability was. D mean other than uh -huh. current liabilities. D mean all liabilities other than all external liability. All External liability. External liability means money from others. Equity is not a money from others. Capital is your money, internal liability. Your uh, TAM loan, NCL plus CL is others' money. That is external liability. So any company, they use their own funds, they use others' money to make the business, to run the business. Agreed? So the way the data is given, you have to understand the working of the unit, the basic structure of the unit, and you have to interpret whether the company is safe or unsafe. Okay. So now this company is okay. Debt to ratio, the solvency ratio 4 is okay. Debt to ratio 3 is also tolerable. Any bank will not exceed this. Any bank, you know, maximum debt to ratio 4 means uh, it's a risk. 5 means still risk. So 3 is ideal. And uh, solvency ratio also 4 is ideal. Okay, friends. So based on this, you understood this. Now the extension they will give. <coughs> they are not going to the asset side, you know. Excuse me. Same sir. question. Yes, madam. Sir, uh, in previous question, uh, I think uh, network should be net worth should be 120, sir. It's not which 90, one, madam? Sir. Net worth. Net worth should be 120. Okay, okay. Now uh, we'll crash check. No problem. Madam, total assets are 480. Okay. So yes, that means total liability also 480. Okay, step number one. Total yes. liability, I mean, uh, total liability mean TOL. The mm -hmm. TOL is four times and equity is one time. Sir, total liability is four times. Four part is 480, sir. Then one part will be 120, no, sir. I'll, four plus one, no, madam, five, you know. So four plus one, five. Five is equal to 480, madam. So 480 divided by 5, you have to divide by... Madam, ma 4... Ma ma then we will find out the DER, ma Ah, correct. Madam, this is 4 is to 1 mean. This is 4 parts. This is 4 parts. This capital is 1 part. So totally 5 parts. 4 plus 1. 4 is to 1 mean 4 plus 1. So it is totally 5 parts. The five part is 480. Five parts are 480. Mean one part is equity is 480 divided by 5. 480 divided by 5, 96. Correct, madam. 
oh you may have disc- divided by 4 only uh, ah yes. then wrong oh, uh, 4 plus 1 madam when ratio 3 is to 1 mean you have to total mean 3 plus 1 okay madam four parts one part so okay. four parts total li- outside liability one part is equity so totally five parts the five parts are 480 mean equivalent to one part prt okay. is 96 only so if you decipher this is just like james bond you have to deduct one from other like that like that is a interesting task when you do so many sums you are a master your score will be i am coming to the point when i when i conclude i will tell you you can score easily okay depends on other sa- chapters because economy so many tough question they are asking and uh, hr they are asking so many tough question business mathematics i think uh, you can manage provided you are able to do problem only problem only problem in business mathematics and only case study in hr and only questions and uh, yes in economics and here 50 40 40% will be theory most of the 50 50 or 40 60 will be 60% will be numeric based okay friends okay now question number 11 11 12 now you are coming to the other side same question extension 480 124 is to 1 that you will say 3 is to 1 nca now you are coming to the oh. other side of the balance sheet non uh, non current assets are three times more than ca that mean 3 is to 1 120 uh, uh, correct so here nca three times more 120, than 360 ah uh, correct so 3 plus 1 4 120 360 so nca will be 360 ca will be 120 so current ratio will be 120 divided by 96 120 from that 120 divided by 96 that will become 1.25 nwc will be 120 minus 96 24 all answers you can get what is cr what is nwc what is so it is a interpretation of the balance. you are completely dissecting a balance sheet and whatever question they ask you will be able to answer so comfortably okay So 11 to 12. Now come to 13, 14. Ah, this is another question. I think up to 15 only will be there. Sir, Then we shall give up. Yes, madam. Previous slide. Huh? Okay. Yes, madam. Is the is the working details, madam? First step, second step, third step, fourth step, fifth step. Ah, uh, one by one, you are going. Finally, all answers you have got. What is CR? What is NWC? What is CR? Current ratio. Current ratio is how much? Current assets. Current assets is how much? Yes, 120 divided by 96. So 1.25. NWC is 120 minus 96, 24 lakhs. This actually it will be not 24, 24 crore or 24 lakhs or 24 thousand. It will be expressed in quantum. This is a ratio. Okay, ma'am. Okay, got it. Uh. Which one, madam? Here it is. D means uh, a long like, uh, N- NCL. D is NCL. Okay, NCA, NCL. Uh, D is equivalent to NC. Sometimes they will call NCL, and uh, sometimes debt to ratio they will call D. D means not short term debt, only long term debts, long term provisions, long term funds. Long term funds are considered as D. Okay, understood. That is how. You have to interpret. <laughs> Now, thirteen, thirteen question, thirteen, fourteen. And now is an interesting question. If total assets are twenty lakh, debt to ratio three is to one, current liability is only two lakhs. What is the NWO? What is the LTD? Two more question. What is the net worth? What is the long term debts? Very simple. Total assets twenty. Okay, one by one will go. Can we wait? Total. Ah. Uh, yes, madam. Very simple. Uh, But uh, okay, sir. Okay, okay. Can you wait? Can you calculate? Thirteen, ah? Huh? Okay. You want thirteen? Thirteen. Okay. Ah, uh, only twelve. Ah, uh, okay. Now twelve is over. Thirteen. Thirteen, fourteen. Two questions are asked. Total assets are twenty, ah? Huh? We will first uh, st- understand the steps. Total assets twenty mean total liability also twenty. You need not doubt. He said indirectly they are telling. 
Now, C alone. CL alone, current liability alone, 2 lakhs. Then, 20 minus 2, that becomes D plus E. D means NCL. That only 3 become, becomes liability side, only 3 components. 1 component will get 2 lakhs. So, you minus that 2 lakh. 18 is on account of debt plus equity. Agreed? Now, again you see the data. Debt is 3, equity is 1. 3 is to 1. So, total is 4 parts. So, 18 divided by 4 parts is 4.5. 18 divided by 4 parts is 4.5. So, that mean, that mean, E is 4.5. Long term debts are 3 times more than that. 13.5. The total is 18. Three times more than that. So 18 plus 2, 20. So all mil gaya. So equity is 4.5. Simple question. Equity is 4.5. Long term debts are 13.5 because debt to ratio 3 is to 1. And the CL is just 2 lakh. Already is there. CL is 2 lakh. So total balance is ready. Yes. 13.14 understood or not was. Simple question. That is why I have put it in simple way. You understand. 13, 14. Agreed or not? Okay. Now go to 15. Thrill. Now, now you can... Uh, simple question. But uh, this is a JB question. <coughs> JB question. But still... <coughs> one second. I will read in some... <coughs> Uh, sometimes the throat will uh, dry. Okay, friends, now you look at the question. Mm. A company gets started mm, with a capital, paid a capital 50 lakhs. And the bank stipulates, every bank, they will stipulate that you would receive 3. Now they will not give 3 is to 1. Just they will tell 3. <coughs> Sorry. So the equity will be one time, debt will be three times. <coughs> Sometimes this is a new way, they will only tell three. They will never tell three is to one. Okay, understood? Now, how much company can raise long term loan? This is a simple question. 150 lakh. Ah, 150. Three times only, every bank is allowing. So any term loan, what is the equity? What is the allowed debt equity ratio? <coughs> On that, they will take a decision. Okay, friends, 150. So this is question number 15. This is end of level two. Okay. Now what's the time? Exactly 9.30. Now, shall I go to third and four? Yes or no? I will give a... Okay. So, any doubts mm. with regard to what we have discussed? Earlier, okay. okay. Now, shall I upload th three and four? <coughs> yes, sir. yes or no? Yes, sir. Or uh, you want a break? Because uh, lunch time is oh, now 9.30. Uh -huh. Yes, you, madam. Sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now you come to that. Now level two. Now I will load a level three. One second. I will again share. Mm. Now it is visible or uh, level three. It is visible, madam. All of you, friends. Sir. Session 3. Sir. Are you able yes, to see? Sir. Okay. Credit management. Level 3. Okay. Now. <coughs> okay, sometimes you know. <coughs> Throat getting dried. Okay. Fundamental turnover ratios. 
to assess financial health and profitability. Now only we are going to ratio analysis. You see, these are the ratios, friends. Questions will be asked. Okay. Ah, but oh, so many ratios. Oh my God. Hmm. Okay. First one. This already we know. Return on net worth. What is return on net worth? What is return on equity? Return on net worth or return on equity? Both are same. Return on how much you are investing in a company as a proprietor or as a partner? How much profit you are getting after tax? What is the ratio? This means whether the company is profitable or not. So this is one indicator. Next one is <coughs> ROCE, return on capital employed. The C stands for what? Capital employed. Return on capital employed. So here capital mean debt capital as well as equity capital. Sir, what is debt capital? Owned funds plus long-term borrowed funds are used in ROCE. Sometimes they will use the word ROA. That also they will ask for banks, ROA. What is ROA? Return on assets. Okay. The third is very important, very popular ratio. Current assets turnover ratio, CATO. How many times current assets are rotated versus sales? Okay. All turnover ratios. This is very frequently asked question. Inventory turnover ratio. Oh, stock turnover ratio. How many times stock is rotated? Debt torts turnover ratio. What is debt torts turnover ratio? How many times debt torts are getting rotated? So many ratios, madam. Friends, fixed asset turnover ratio. How many times the sales are? Yes, versus fixed asset. Investment in fixed assets. Okay. NPR. What is NPR? Net profit ratio. Okay. You, you will see live examples. How to calculate formula. Okay. Because these are the questions very, very often asked. OPR. The operating profit is different. Net profit is different. Operating profit is different. Okay. Before, yes. Operating profit mean before payment of interest. <coughs> Next one. Credit or turnover ratio. What is credit or turnover? How much market credit is getting? Raw material, how he is getting on credit time? What is the outstanding level? How many times is rotated? That is credit or turnover ratio. Then RM holding level. The holding level and uh, turnover both are interlinked. How it is interlinked? Just wait. RM holding level. What is RM holding level? Raw material. How many months raw material they are holding? Work in process, that means how many months raw materials will be converted to uh, finished goods, WIP holding level or cycle. Either the, here they will call holding level, but here instead of holding level, correct word is cycle. Finished goods holding level. How long the finished goods are remaining in the godown? Okay, inventory holding level. How much inventory? Here inventory turnover is different. Inventory holding level is in different. How many months of inventory they are having at a time? This is turnover. And uh, the turnover multiplied by, yes, the holding level. We will have a live example. <coughs> turnover, when, multi, uh, when divided by 12, okay, it will become holding level. For example, I am telling inventory turnover or debt or turnover. Okay. The outstanding level of book debts is three months. Have, the company gives three months book debts. Then what will be the turnover? Turnover will be 12 divided by three, four times turnover. Three months book debts mean holding level will be three months book debts. Okay. Turnover will be, it will be three months. That will be four. How it is got three, the holding level and the turnover, when you multiply both, it will become 12. For example, I give example, no, 
the tars old in a well suppose your company is giving one month credit only one month credit only then how much will be how much debt will be outstanding sales divided by 12 one month book debts will be outstanding at a time correct you know okay now what will be the turnover 12 times turnover why one time one time it will be rotated so turnover will be sales divided by outstanding inventory okay both are interlinked just wait we will see then current assets holding level it is very important how many how many months of current assets they are holding they are holding excessive current assets then proprietary ratio what is the net worth what is the total tangible assets how many times they are leveraging this also leveraging okay with less capital how much assets they are controlling 14 15 ratios ultimately will be okay not all the ratio they will give some live example now we will go to a live example these are the popular ratio okay one example aryan go balance sheet okay friends this shall i load it uh, today now i think uh, okay we will go up to what time you can go 9:45 yes friends yes friends you are dinner time where is your yes no now, problem sir another nine, another 10 uh, minutes we can go you know okay yes <coughs> because is a continuous exercise is a balance sheet of a company live for ratio analysis they will give some data sometimes they will give a balance sheet it depends on but when you have understood you can easily do now you know hurry and go their lt loans are capital is 120 maybe lakhs lt loans are 540 that is ncl trade credit 40 lakhs that mean they are enjoying they are raw, raw materials they are buying on credit time 40 lakhs unpaid okay stock 40 lakhs short term provision like bonus income tax 80 lakhs cc loan bank from the bank 300 lakhs ocl 30 so the total liability is 1110 lakhs okay maybe in lakhs ah, okay just like that so how the assets are there fixed assets 495 intangible assets are there more intangible assets mean it's not a good balance sheet <coughs> okay intangible assets have no tangible value realizable value stock finished goods 20 raw material 80 work in process 60 why the break up is there finished goods holding level raw material turnover raw material holding level how many months are raw material they are holding work in process how many months are work in process they are holding book debts how many months are book debts outstanding from this data you can find out <coughs> okay 120 divided by book debts always will bring to sales 120 divided by 960 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 12 you will get the book debts in terms of months how many months of book debts how many months of rm how many months of finished goods all will be yes always remember raw material bring to purchases if you know want a if you have a notebook you note it this is the thing you have to remember <coughs> raw material how many months are raw material how to link it you have to link it you know raw material you cannot link it to sales raw material will be linked to purchases and the finished work in process will be linked to will be linked to cost of production cop mean cost of production abbreviation and the finished goods will be linked to 20 will be linked to cost of sales what's the difference purchase plus something will be cost of production plus again administrative selling expenses other brokerage uh, everything will become cost of uh, sales okay so like that it will keep on uh, yes value addition will take place okay now as yes, book debts 120 cash 50 was here this is the balance sheet now questions will be question number 1 Question number one: Find out NPR. Find out NPR. So this will be from balance. 
P and L account, this will be from balance sheet. You agree? This will be from balance sheet. This will be from P and L account. Okay. This will be the additional information they will give. Sales is this much. Purchase is this much. Cost of production this much. Cost of sale this much. Uh, NBAT this much. Interest this much. Taxes this much. Okay. How this uh, data is relevant? Just wait. First one, easily you can find out. Net profit ratio. What is net profit ratio after tax you have to take? 12 divided by sales. What is sales? 960. 12 divided by 960. Just percentage button you press. Just percentage button you press. You will get 1.25. Are you getting or not? You can do along with me. So the net profit ratio is 1.25. This is the formula. Never forget the formula. Agreed? So one question over? Okay. Now question number two. Simple boss. Question number two. What is OPR? What is operating profit? What is operating profit? Operating profit is the NPAT interest will be added back because I think in uh, uh, another terminology you have to remember EBIT, EBIT, EBT, EAT. These are the words. Sometimes the exam they will give like that. EBIT means earning before interest and tax. That is operating profit. The other name for EBIT is operating profit. Operating profit means bank interest will not have been recognized. Before de uh, deducting bank interest, that is called operating profit. Okay, understood. What is operating profit? EBIT. What is EBIT? Earning before interest and tax. This is a normal word they will use. Uh, they will give the data like that also. NPAT is also given as EAT. NPAT sometimes they will give some books they will give NPAT, some books they will give EAT. What is EAT? Earning after tax. This is net profit after tax. All over. Tax is paid. Okay, now OPR how it is calculated? No doubt. OPR is operating profit divided by sales in percentage. What is operating profit? They are not given directly. Operating profit will be, okay, Operating profit even before tax. EBIT means before tax. So the 12 is net profit after tax. So the interest you add 15. The tax also before tax. Yes, you have to add. That is called operating profit. So net profit is got after deducting interest after paying the tax. But operating profit means before all this. This is the definition of operating profit. So 12 plus 15 plus for 29, uh, 27, 31. 31 divided by 960. 31 divided by 960, just press your percentage button, 3.23 is the operating profit ratio. Net profit is different, operating profit different. Easily can find out. Now ratio three, okay? Yes, this is the answer. This is also called EBIT. Is also called operating profits, also called yes, EBIT earning before you know now is a new terminology. You remember this is a old one operating profit. Now EBIT, every company EBIT. What is my earning before interest and tax? Okay, next question. It will come. This question will come. Uh, yes, screen and answer will be explained step by step. That is my yes, all my presentation. I will never only give questions. questions. Sir, in that, sir, in that we are adding that uh, tax and interest, no? The operating tax. Yes, madam. Yes, yes. Then can we what say that it? it is earning before interest and tax? Ah, yes, yes. Earning before, that is why operating profit is nothing but earning before interest and tax. So to get it, yeah, there will not be given separately. So they will given indirectly. They have already given net profit after tax. Interest they have shown separately. Taxes they have paid separately, shown separately. So to get operating profit, that is EBIT, 12 
you have to add back 15, add back 4, so that will become the EBIT. Okay, friends, understood? So EBIT is very important, especially in leverage calculation and all, but that is for MBA people. For uh, you, yes, bankers, I think to this extent, these are the popularly used yes ratio. Okay, next one, you see simple. Okay, find out, uh, now they are asking, return on net worth or return on equity, both are same. Now, most of the books are using ROE. This is the old terminology. Now, new, all new, new terminology has come, you know. So, ROE, return on net worth was the older terminology. Now, ROE, ROE, return on equity, return on equity. ROCE, ROS, that is return on capital employed. That E mean employed, capital employed. So, sometimes the abbreviation, each abbreviation uh, will give a different uh, uh, expansion. So the formula is NPAT divided by net worth into press the button, yes, that is a percentage. So here NPAT is 12, their capital is 120. Okay, so 12 divided by 120, uh, just to press the percentage button, 10%. That mean, if you put, if you have got money, if you invest this is hurry and go, the, the shareholders are getting or the investors are getting 10%. Suppose you invest your money in a bank, will you get 10%? Uh, no. So the most of the businessmen, they prefer to invest in business because instead of investing in bank and getting less return, they invest in business. They expect they get more return. Okay, friends, correct, understood. Okay, that is called, yes. Uh, return on equity. So the return on equity over. Now what is the tangible net worth of the unit? Sometimes they will ask TNW. TNW mean intangible if any you have to minus. Capital is 120. I agree. But this 120 is a danger because intangible assets are 105. As per Basel 3, remember intangible assets will be removed from the capital, will be deducted from the capital. Intangible assets are nothing but it's a NPA. As far as we are concerned, are we not calling NPA? So this may become a full loss or part loss. So right now, you knock it off from the balance sheet. Basel 3 doesn't allow. Okay, it will be there. But we are really calculating the net worth of the company, intangible assets, if any, will be knocked off. Knocked off means will be removed. That will be uh, adjusted. Okay. So that is called also called tangible net worth. If they don't use the word T, you can use NW. But intangible assets need, immediately need not be detected. Profit, loss mean immediately you have to recognize. Last, you cannot park it on this side. That is company rule. But sir, it is R uh, Sir, intangible assets are uh, R and D and uh, uh, goodwill. Ah sir. yes, yes. R and D, goodwill, copyright, patent right, preliminary expenses, preliminary expenses. Okay, or accumulated losses earlier, before no, no some uh, this one. All these are called as what? Uh, intangible assets. Sometimes you will have paid some uh, goodwill. That is goodwill mean of the record. Okay, it will not be, there will be no uh, vouchers or something. Uh, okay, you are occurring. So goodwill, patent rights. Patent rights, you cannot debit your PNL account. It's an uh, intangible assets. Okay, because uh, sometimes, you know, you will not get back sometimes. Patent rights, sometimes one payment you are making and uh, Sometimes you may not get back that amount. The value, yes, patent right, copyright, uh, yes, goodwill, uh, okay, R&D, 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 no, so many companies are investing so much in R&D, they will not debit to P&L account. They will not debit to P&L account. They will simply park it in uh, uh, intangible assets. But afterwards, out of every year profit, they will try to amortize. That exercise is called as amortization. So the intangible asset over a period of year should be slowly absorbed out of your profits. 
okay this year 20 crore profit you reduce the intangible assets next year 30 crores profit you use it for reducing the intangible assets the okay, intangible assets initially you are parking but ultimately you are removing from your balance sheet that is a bad. company is a good company <coughs> initially it will be there so any balance sheet if you analyze if you have got intangible assets auditor will have made that remark you immediately will be alert such companies yes not you have to be very careful net worth you have to literally minus that intangible then only you are calculating the net worth on a realistic basis capital on a realistic basis is exclusive of excluding uh, intangible assets agreed or not agreed or not boss yes sir no because yes sir Intang yes intangible assets eventually not down intangible assets eventually may not have any realizable value that is the interpretation 3 4 what is the debt to ratio this is our popular ratio debt to ratio is 540 divided by 120 120 is the capital right now we don't worry because intangible let it be there when only when they specifically mention tangible net worth then you minus it okay like loss this need not be immediately adjusted it will be there but as a banker be aware of this be aware of this okay what is the ratio 540 divided by 120 so 4.5 this limit is already over debted why because of four times debt four times debt compared to equity so it is already over debted company three is okay four is also not for all units only for msme units we can allow up to four some infrastructure unit five six we can allow sanction that is will allow for venture capital, they will allow. <coughs> okay, friends. Okay. So, you have come up to this. Yes, sir. Then we will continue next. Okay. <coughs> By the time, I will set right my throat also. <coughs> okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. Take Thank care. You, Good night. We'll meet again. We'll meet again. <coughs> okay. Sir, a little load, sir. Okay. Yes, boss. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir. No problem. No problem. No problem. Okay. Debtor and creditor. Debtor? And creditor. Okay. Debtor is the thing we are selling on credit time. It's a debtor. Okay. Our sales... Miss Jodo have received the debt. Ah, they have received our goods, but they are not settled. Unpaid invoices are debtors. This is a receivable, is an asset. Whereas creditors are payable. We had it's a liability. It's a liability. We have received goods. On credit basis. We have received goods on ah, credit basis. Here we have given credit. Here we have taken credit. There's a difference. And loan okay. is uh, who has taken the loan? Which one, boss? Loanee, loanee. Loanee? Yes, sir. The word loanee is, uh, yes, borrower is called also a loanee. Okay, that doesn't mean a banker is a loaner. No. And normally loanee, borrower. Loanee is the borrower. Okay, and yes. Uh, Investee. Uh, Bledge. In Bledger, we are the, the customer is the Bledger. We become the blood G. Okay. And mortgage. Mortgage or mortgage. We are becoming mortgage. Okay. Bank yes, is mortgage and mortgage oh. is uh, who has mortgage who is mortgage. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Mortgage and bank is the mortgage because they are mortgaging in our favor. And because they are getting the loan from us. So the preferred yes. mortgage is equitable mortgage. That is the cheapest and easiest. And is less cumbersome. That is why bankers prefer. They do you not can. prefer registered mortgage because stamp duty is there. So they prefer equitable mortgage. That's the most preferred model. Okay, friends. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.